we know that once equilibrium has been established, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, and the ratio of concentration of products to concentration of reactants remains constant as long as the temperature remains constant. We know that when we do make changes to the system, the Chatelier's principle governs how the system responds to those changes, and the change we're going to look at now is a volume or a pressure change. Now it's important to notice here that volume and pressure changes are essentially or have the same effect because when you increase the volume of a space and you make more space available, that has a knock-on effect that automatically decreases the pressure because there's more space for the particles to move. In the same way, when you decrease the volume of a container, you are automatically increasing the pressure. So from now, I'm going to speak only about pressure changes, knowing that a volume change affects a pressure change and the result is the same. So the first example that we are going to look at is we are going to look at what happens when the volume of a container is decreased. So the change here is that we are decreasing the volume of a container, which automatically increases the pressure within that container. Now, we know that when there's a bigger pressure and a smaller space for those particles, the reaction by Le Chatelier's principle tries to undo that change. And since there is less space, the reaction tries to favor the direction that produces less stuff. So we count the number of gas molecules on each side of this reaction. And we can see that the forward reaction only produces two moles of substance, two ammonia molecules or moles. Whereas the reverse reaction produces one nitrogen mole and three hydrogen moles, so four moles of substance. So the forward reaction clearly produces less stuff, which would take up less space. So in this change here, where we have decreased the volume and increased the pressure, we have said there is now less space available. So the reaction's response is to favor the direction that produces less stuff, that is to favor the forward direction over the reverse direction, meaning the rate of the forward reaction is greater than the rate of the reverse reaction, for a period of time, again all happening in this fixed ratio, until once again equilibrium is re-established re and our Kc value remains the same because temperature has not changed and then equilibrium is re-established where the rate of the forward is then equal to the rate of the reverse. All of these changes only have a periodic effect on the reaction where it favors a certain direction until it re-establishes equilibrium. The second option would be what would happen if we increase the volume of the system which would thereby decrease the pressure and we know that increasing the volume decreasing the pressure means that there is now more space available so the reaction favors the direction that produces more stuff in this case the reverse direction produces Four moles, so we say that the rate of the reverse reaction is temporarily greater than the rate of the forward reaction until, once again, equilibrium is re-established and the ratio of products to reactants reaches that value of Kc, where we say, once again, the rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Um, there is a complicated explanation for why exactly this does not have an effect on Kc, if you're interested, you can look into partial pressures, but for now, it is enough to understand that the only factor that can change your value of Kc is a temperature change. 